Alrighty, welcome. Um, in this video, I just would like to demonstrate my process of working with Power BI. I just watched a quite interesting video with a Google data scientist, um, and he recommended um, a particular data set. It's a very valuable practice for data scientists, and I thought um, I'd just record my process, how I work with Power BI and this data set. So I've downloaded the data set, which are these three files. This data set contains miles per gallon data from cars and is in a text format uh, limited by spaces. So I'll just change it to, to text. And then the names as well. The interesting thing here is with the names, um, the the column for the ah oh, sorry this needs to be different this needs to be names um, so um, so this tells me now here MPG cylinders displacement and so on these are the these are the uh, fields in this file and this is the actual uh, as you can see notepad is uh, much worse editor than not pad plus plus. So here I get them, but I can see the um, the header is missing. So what I'll do to make my life a little bit easier, I'll just use Excel and we'll copy and paste the header into this. Uh, just to here, I want to open this with Excel. Looks like Excel. It's not given to me here as an option. Maybe the easiest thing is to just um, open Excel. And then just drag this into there. So this is it. So I get here now the data. Um, I can see this is now all in. It's actually in two columns A and B. So it has not automatically detected that there's a that there's a tab between these. So what I'll do is I just Control Plus move this to the right, and then split this one here with. Um, text to columns, delimit it, and then let's see if we use tab. Interestingly, this doesn't give me, it's not a tab. Space is good, so let's do that. And then I can also take the additional columns that I added before out. The other thing that I typically do is so if you double click here in between, you get a nice layout. And then the only thing I need to do is put the header here. So I open up, I've got no idea why they made it so difficult um, to life. But in any event, I just take this uh, file with the headers. Normally, I would just put the headers into the, uh, into the file, but these guys for whatever reason thought this should be different so here I have another problem that this is again uh, giving me a classification so I will split this into multiple columns and say here this is delimited with uh, initially yeah that's pretty good no space let's take this so now I have my definition of the variable, continuous, multi-value and so on, but what I really want is really just this. And I will copy this into this file and I do this by using transpose. Da, 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 da. Do I transpose here? No, let's go transpose, paste special. And I want to transpose. And now I've got what I want. So here, let's take this whole thing again, double click. I've got the MPG, the uh, column, cylinders, displacement. Let's make it consistent, take that away as well. What's power? Same thing here. Weight. Acceleration. 
model it's interesting origin one this is something that i have to check um, model ah, okay this is probably the year model and origin let's check in the names file so we have here car which is the name origin is multi-valued this grid model is the year this is continuous multi-value so but what can i find out the origin what the definitions da, 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 looks like it doesn't give it to me. data source definition or maybe just leave it for the moment whatever or let's see what origin could be so i'll use here the excel filters this is really a very small data set in the scheme of things it's just two yeah okay that really is not a lot let me just check on the website okay that's okay um, i assume this could be where it was produced if we look here at one so i just filter this using the normal excel filter function if we do one here ford plymouth this looks all like us Saab, this looks european and three is probably japanese there we go so that's it we do this in power i will fix this there so all right that's all good so we just save this now go back to power and use now this this text file so and this was da, 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 was great Ah, this was in my documents folder. And da, 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 MPG, and it was the other MPG. So, power I will not come back. This is perfect. MPG cylinder, cylinders I still have the column here, it doesn't really matter. So, let's edit this. So, Power Query has now started which is the engine to wrangle your data so to modify it clean it and so on so what i can do here now is do the the first fix so to fix the origin and we found out that one was us so, so here one usa this is now another step in power query i didn't like that enter a number value oh, that's interesting okay so let's do this so here this is a is a number let's make this a text which is quite easy in power bi so replace and this should work now one usa two it's not very um, precise here you just call it European but for the moment let's just stick it to that stick to that so we say two was European and three was Japan da, 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 da. So, three was Japan. so you see we have now this audit trail of what, what we did we, we replace this value and this is probably all we need for the moment we've got mpg is a number cylinders which is a number displacement which is a number horsepower which is a number weight which is probably in pound it could be interesting to change that to kilograms here in australia we are using kilograms so let's see what the conversion is i to be honest don't even know So let's say I think it'll be S to KG is zero point and again let's put this in there see if this makes sense. So what I'll do is I'll add another column here, custom calculation, I call this weight kg and this is the 
weight times our formula. So let's see if this makes sense. Uh, 1.5 tons sounds realistic. Could potentially even put it into tons, but let's leave it for now with these kilos. We've got the car here. But could be potentially interesting to split them up into brands. So maybe do that. So we just copy this. Paste it. Sorry. This is duplicate. So duplicate. I call this brand. And we just cut this off after the first space. So we say here, transform. And then let's do that. Where is it? Split. Let's transpose. right in front of my face can't see the forest between the trees so and we want to do this by delimiter the delimiter is space each occurrence of the delimiter is fine let's see what this brings us so we've got now here brand and that looks pretty good because that's the model so it's for the moment assume we don't really need these ones here i just want to keep the brand so we've got the brand, we've got the weight, um, horsepower. This is a continuous variable and it might be good to classify them a little bit. And that's probably what we'll be doing now. Probably similar with displacement. This is a bit of an issue here with the, with the question mark. Let's see how many question marks we have here, which means it's missing. So we'll take them all off. Just look at the question marks. There's a few here, not that many, but I guess to clean this up, um, it'd be good to have this in there so we can either leave them up or clean them up. But to clean them up, I would need to look them all up. What the horsepower? Let's see, the Ford Pinto. What's the horsepower of that? Hearing a little bit, let's see what the hell do we have. So, Ford Pinto. And now would it be good to have the. Oh no. So it's a hundred horsepower, 1971. Which year was the 71? 101. So, probably let's just assume that. So, the other one here is. They're all younger, so let's just do that. So, horsepower. No, yeah, I have them nicely with the space. I don't know why Excel is giving me no drama. Let's try this again. Ah, here we go. Now it's working. So, all right, so we said here for the Pinto it was 101. Let's get the other ones where we had issues. Da, 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 da. Is it not giving me the horsepower? Probably all the specs that you have the horsepower. So, I didn't see on the Ford, I don't know if I have manufacturing. 152 acceleration, where is the horsepower? Manufactured displacement. Oh, here we go, 84 horsepower, 85 PS, interesting, okay, change a little bit. Let's put in the 84. Four. Then we have the Renault Le Cardinux, let's see what that gives me in horsepower. 55. Oh, yeah, that's, a, that's a good one. Not too much horsepower, not too much fuel. So then we've got the Ford Mustang Cobra that's probably on the other end of the equation. Those are one of the polluters. It's 
Da, 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 82. All right, so hopefully we got our nice and clean data set. Let's save this. Go back to Power BI and refresh. That's a good sign. No more question mark. Oh, no, there is one. Ah, no, this is just left over if I go to all. I get them all, and if I go here now, I don't have a question mark anymore. So we've got now a nice and clean data set. So, all right, what's part? As this is a con continuous um, variable, let's break this up a little bit into classes and make this a conditional column. Let's say here, this is the horsepower class. If the horsepower is, let's say, 70. If it's, um, da, 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 ah, the horsepower is a string, that's probably not good for our requirements, so let's make this a, probably whole number is good. And try our conditional column again. Plus, and we say here if the horsepower is less than let's say 70, then the output is low. Then we have another one if the horsepower is less than da, 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 let's say I don't know 120, then it's medium. And otherwise, it's high. This power is greater than 120. So now we have our classification here. It's interesting that it has kept the Double quotes, we probably don't want them, so let's just change the method. This would be needed, but it looks like Power BI is more clever again than us and automatically adds them because it knows this is a string. So, but again, it shows machine learning sometimes is not that intelligent. So, now we've got them properly classified. Let's see, should we classify something else here? Weight, for example. Ah, maybe the MPG could be interesting. So MPG. Um, what's nice here is in Power BI you get this um, column distribution. So we can see we have 129 distinct, 79, 73 unique ones. The lowest one is interesting. It doesn't give it to me. It's a bit disappointing. And the biggest one here is okay, but we will get it. We're just looking here. So we've got nine miles per gallon, la, la, la. this is a quite big gas guzzler. And we've got 46.6. So if we divide this, I don't know, by three classes, we get about um, 15. So we say maybe everything, another conditional column. So let me say, um, everything, if it's, Smaller the MPG, smaller less than 15, it's low. If its MPG is less than 30, it's medium. And if it's greater 
then greater than 30. Be like it's my I maybe we can make it to a high MPG. MPG make it this one here so I can get the results it's even easier to understand for us. Okay, that is it. So let's go back, close and apply, and we'll get now our data model here. And um no, let's maybe start with a few rankings and see um, which car are the top performers from an NPG perspective. And you see here now the worst performer is the AMC Ambassador Brougham. And the top one is the Toyota Corolla. About 150 miles per gallon look a little bit much. But that is the data. I forgot to name something here properly. So, MPG Simmons is based on the weight acceleration model origin. Car weights, KG brand, HP class. Ah, custom, I forgot to name this one. This is the MPG class. And da 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 da. So I wanted to check the, the year. Ah, this is the model. Let's maybe make this clearer color this model year. So seventy. So um and let's check off the thing again. Let's take the let's just apply these changes. And let's have a look at the model here for this. Oh, uh, okay, I understand. <laughs> yeah, it looks like we have a few Corollas here, and also a few model years. So, what this means is we need to put uh, an average here. And this is very easy in Power BI, we just say here average. And now this whole thing makes more sense. So, um, we've got now the best performance that Mazda GLC and um, where's our friend Toyota Corolla? Well, the beauty is now as we did as with my modeling as I did the, the brand we can put that in here as well and then filter on this and see where our friends the Toyotas are here we go. So we've got a fair few Toyotas. This doesn't make a lot of sense to have them here as a... Uh, we can we see the example here to sum them up. So we will just go here and make this a text field. So we say here this is a text field. And we close and apply this and we should get so of course and this sum is not working now. So let's take this back and then I will get the okay, I'm not getting all the model here, Which is fine. So um we see now the different model years, we see the top Oh, sorry, this is the worst performer, the AMC Ambassador. I want to see what that car is. So, let's have a look at this. Must be a, a real gas car. No, no. If you care for the planet, you probably wouldn't buy one of those ones. Oh, I thought it was a Hummer or something, but it looks like... Um, not really. So, what else are the bad ones? The high 1200D. Interesting. So, that's actually the worst one. Chevy 220. Let's have a look at this one. Ah, okay. That looks like a big gas guzzler. Alright. So, um, okay. So, we have a bit of an overview. Let's have a look um, which 
brand which is the top performer so we could um, for example now just copy this copy and paste um, we don't want the car anymore we don't want the model here maybe leave it um, I like to show this as a uh, it's not too great it's not, it's not that great because we're getting now a different model here so it's probably more interesting here which miles per gallon um, let's leave the model here out here for the moment we can see from a brand perspective VW is the top and then Ford at the bottom um, See this AMC thing. I have to admit I'm not an expert for BS classic cars. This surprises me a little bit. Because why didn't ah okay this is here. Ah this is really an AMC. Uh -huh. There is a brand called AMC. You never stop learning. So well, because you can see in Power BI you've got the connection if you click on something, the gremlin, which is probably also not really a a car for the greenness of this energy. Well, this is not even that bad. This has a PG of 18 miles per gallon. Uh, I guess in, in today's time, it's probably still something you wouldn't buy, but not as bad as the worst one, which is the Ambassador Bruhan. Okay. So, all right. Um, and now we do the interesting stuff. Maybe one last thing, let's have a look of how this performed over time and let's take the MPG and let's have a look the model here how this performed and maybe let's do this the other way around I want to see if this by oops no, I want to see if this is ending so we see that's good so we had a bit of a positive trends over the over the years so the miles per gallon has has gone up all right and then so this was the, the basic stuff and let's see if we find more interesting things with the AI so and I would like to see now I'm using the new key influencer variable and I want to see what are the key influence factors for the MPG class Oops, so this is one. I want to analyze the MPG class and let's have a look at everything. I want to see the weight, if this has a kilogram. The origin would be interesting if country origin. I didn't check this before. I could have checked also if Japanese cars are, you know. Um, the model here, let's see, that had, we already saw that was a quite influencing factor. The horsepower class. The displacement again with the displacement this should have categorized this let me just do this quickly so if we go here and say the queries and what do we have in the displacement we have values from 68 to 455 for 50 let's make it 150 so let's say we want to have here another conditional column Oops, 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 that was too quick. Let's look at this. So, conditional column. And we say if the displacement, this is the displacement class, this displacement class is less than 150, then it's a log displacement. Then if the displacement is less than less than three hundred, it's a medium. And if it's greater than three hundred, it is a high displacement. So this in general makes AI if you classify variables as opposed to having continuous ones is typically you're better off in anything that involves 
um, AI statistics in general. So then we can take HP and we want our new displacement class, which is this one. Let's see if the cylinders do something. The brand could be interesting. The car I'll leave out for the moment. So and this is now what we see here. We see here now so the system has gone and applied its AI, which um, is likely Nave Bains, Nave Base. And we can see now what is causing MPG class to be blank. Oh, I'm getting again this thing. It's better to drag it in there. So here we go. And let's see MPG, the empty values. MPG blank. Maybe I made a mistake. Let's have a look. So, typically it's a good idea to um, name these properly so you can find them easily. No, I have a problem. So, this was the displacement class. Let's see here. Oops. Let's rename this and say that this was the. was in PG class. So we said less than 15, less than 30, and greater than 30. Ah, if it's exactly 30, so it's probably is greater than or equal. Um, probably the good old Merck had this in PG. That would be a very interesting one. You can see the little tricky things in data science, Mercedes Benz. Let's have a look at them. So, but there we go. This is MPG class, HPG class, displacement. Ah, column custom material wasn't found. So, the whole number. Ah, we changed this into model year. Let's try this again. Yeah. And this one was, should have been a text. So then we have here the change type that's fixed. Displacement class is fixed as well. Look in the genes placement class, so that looks good. So let's try this. Completely just this. Ah, that's good. That's exactly what we want because there shouldn't be an empty. But let's have a look now at what is influencing a high MPG. And we can see now low horsepower is correlating with high MPG. Honda seems to be particularly successful. Volkswagen seems to be good. A was a good year for MPG. Interestingly, better than the two years later, 82. 
that soon, pretty okay. 81. So a clear trend that the newer, the better the MPG. Um, let's have a look at the culprits. And we can see cylinders is also a big driver for low MPG. So the more cylinders, the more gas we use. Chevy is not a friend of the greenies. And then uh, old built year, like 73 and 72, I'm um, 72, shouldn't say that this is a bad year, is leading to low MPG. Ford, interestingly, also not a great performer here. And 71. Again, interestingly, that here the 73 is a worse performer than the 71. Let's have a look at segment. Probably that gives us those as well. And here we can see the segment of high horsepower is typically leading to big gas consumption. Let's have a look at high MPG. This is more interesting. We've got a few segments here. We've got low horsepower and cylinders less than five. It's a big driver. 70, 57 percentage point higher than the average for high um, miles per gallon. Then we've got HP class not low. 81 and again less than five so cylinders again a driver for better miles per gallon. 80 again the low cylinders and not low 82 and again the cylinders. Yeah, so as you can see, I've worked on this for three quarters of an hour and got a lot of insight into what's going on. I could, of course, not do much more here, calculations. I haven't used a single text calculation here. I could use way more visuals. Maybe let's do one last one to show the regional distribution. So we had the, the country of origin. Where's the origin here? And then to take the MPG class and put this all on a map. So, origin. And we want to do, ah, the MPG class is the, is a category. So maybe let's put the, 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 the Oh, sorry, this shoe is wrong anyway. This should have been, origin should have been here. And the MPG class should have been here. Ah, here we go, that's better. So we can see now high MPG is a third of the production in the, um, in the US, but it's half of the production in Japan. Interestingly, nothing in Europe. That is a bit strange because we had some European guys. Why are they not showing me? Ah, okay, because this is not viewed as a country and it looks like it, it, for that reason it doesn't show quick fix for this. It's not the perfect fit, but um, my origins are in Austria, so we'll put them all, the Europeans, all into Austria. So I just do this here, we say here, replace values and make all the Europeans Austrian. We had a bit of a car production in Austria, so it is not totally wrong. And the Austrian tourism marketing always likes to say, Austria is the heart of Europe. So the heart of Europe is probably a good, nice way to show, to show it. And here we go. So we've got now the Europeans on the map as well in the heart of Europe. And you can see the trend is pretty similar to Japan, so half of them are high MPG and half of them are medium. Um, both of them don't have any low MPG cars. Cool, so I hope you've enjoyed this little um, demonstration. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us. I'm also very happy to hear suggestions how my process could be improved, where I'm horribly wrong. Just let me know, thank you.